Hi, I'm Dr. Rudy Cashman. Wellness is my major interest at my age 39 for probably another 39 years. <laughs> Thanks again for watching. We've had this continuing number of programs on wellness. You can review our previous shows by going cashmanhealth.com. Uh, resources in uh, previous 100 TV shows come up to educate you about how to get getting well. I have wonderful guests with me uh, today from Trine University. I have uh, f uh, four people and we've been running a project together there among the students and I give some lectures there and, and uh, they have our, the way of eating which I recommend in their cafeteria and it's just a wonderful place and I highly recommend it. sometimes you maybe even stop in the cafeteria, the food is great. And we're going to, let's start here uh, by everyone on this table introducing themselves and telling us a little bit about what you do at the university. So Alice, you're first to bat. <laughs> Um, I am Allison Brochak, and I'm a senior at Trine University, uh, majoring in exercise science. And uh, currently, I'm working on a research study for a capstone project um, at Trine University, focusing on the effects of vegetarianism. And I'm Kathy Swick. I'm the chair of the exercise science department, and I get to work with our great students and our other faculty on developing these projects. And I'm Allison Everett. Um, I'm a senior exercise science pre-physical therapy major, and I've done honors research on neurasthenia as well as capstone research on isometric core strength, and as that relates to speed and stability. And I'm Susan Anspaugh. I um, am the person who actually leads the capstone class, so I get the privilege of watching these fabulous students, and they are fabulous, and you will be impressed, because I'm impressed with them every day. Um, develop, uh, take information that they've learned from college and develop their own projects and develop their mind and their way of thinking and the interest that they've shown in living a positive and healthy lifestyle. And not only that, but they're interested in helping the people around them do so also. Thank you very much. You must admit I'm very excited today because our fellow travelers, students and teachers and professors, and uh, let's get on the road here. And Allison, tell us about your project, which you're running with control groups and eating groups uh, at the university. And I attended it last Monday to, to see uh, how it's going, and I thought it was really well run. Let, let's hear about your project. Um, so basically, I called it the Brochek mission. My last name is Brochek, and what I really wanted to show is that people can change their lives and become healthy at no matter what age. I'm only 22, which in perspective, I'm pretty young, but my entire life I've ate unhealthy and have lived more of an unhealthy lifestyle. At my highest, I was 296 pounds. Wow. And um, uh, over July, over this past summer, I kind of just haven't had an epiphany of really wanting to get in shape and wanting to change everything. So in July, I started at 280. And actually, it's perfect. I got on the scale before this today, and I'm at 229.8. So I've lost a little over 50 pounds. I think all we can do is accomplish that. It's yeah. wonderful. So I'm really happy about that. But basically, over the summer, I knew we would be starting our capstone projects um, in the fall. And I had no idea what I wanted to do. And Susan said, you know, come with an idea, come with a couple ideas. And I still didn't know. Um, but my housemate and best friend, Jocelyn Garrison, has been a vegetarian for nine years. And so she actually had me watch two documentaries, Fat Sick and Nearly Dead. Interesting enough, I watched the whole thing again this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Which is very, very interesting. This mm -hmm. is the book, but there's also a documentary, and it's called Forks Over Knives. And they both go over plant-based um, eating and the effects that it can have on you um, while taking meat products out and living a healthier um, and nutritious diet. So I watched those. And in the same night, I decided what I was going to do for my capstone, which was see the effects um, mm -hmm. that becoming a vegetarian has on people, as well as me myself becoming a vegetarian. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been a vegetarian for a full two and a half months, but cutting down meats since mm -hmm. September. Mm -hmm. So basically for the study, I have a control group who's doing their same thing, but with the pre and post tests. Yeah, which means they're eating the regular way, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, they're so eating they're, the regular way. They're not changing anything, just yeah. coming in for those pre and post tests. And then the experimental group, 
I worked with a dietitian. Her name is Julia Just, and mm -hmm. we worked out an eight-week program. The mm -hmm. first four weeks, cutting down their meat products mm -hmm. and what they're eating. Mm -hmm. and now into week five, they're full vegetarians. Mm -hmm. And um, we've been, even like you said, we've been having uh, food yeah. demonstrations from Bon Appetit where they can learn more about healthy eating and how to Yeah, can you imagine food. the university puts on cooking classes uh, with their chefs? I went to one Monday, and I'm going again next Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's just marvelous. You have to give the university a lot of credit. I really mm -hmm. enjoyed that uh, class. I learned all about Italian food. I think <laughs> Northern food is next Monday, right? Nordic. 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 Yeah. Nordic. Nordic. Yes. Okay. Nordic. Nord Nordic. Yes. Yes. Nordic food. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I'm looking forward to it. And uh, how, how's the project going? Um, so it's going great. Uh, I've really gotten to know all my participants and where they're coming. Actually, one of my participants has already lost 13 pounds, which wow. I think wow. is great. Um, it's a matter of six weeks or so? Yeah, we're in week five right something? now. That's something? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's really six weeks. Close. So yeah. I'm really, really proud of all of them. And, and eating regularly, right? Yeah. Eating yeah. all they want. It's just different food, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they're still getting in all of those mm -hmm. nutritious values. They're still yeah. getting in their protein and everything. Yeah. Um, but, and you know, I'm just as new to everything, so I'm learning with them and yeah. taking suggestions from them and, and really helping them out too. That's, that's uh, really great. What One do you think? One of the things yeah. I think that's really unique about Allie's project is she has support and she does that, some of it electronically through emails and words of encouragement. The supports followed up with the cooking class, which we know for any mm -hmm. kind of behavior change, you have to help educate people how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the really hard parts. Yeah. Um, and the third is that they're tracking. So they're learning, you know, I think a lot of us, we know what we eat, but until you have to write it down, you don't know yeah. how much we're eating or the types of foods. So I really think what Allie's pulled together yeah. are three success strategies. And so as we, you know, we look at could you repeat them again, Kathy? Sorry. Sure. Again, I think the support. Um, a friend or a group. A friend, mm -hmm. a group, right. So Very, important. Very yeah. important. And they get together once a week. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we have the weekly meetings where it's almost yeah. a support group in person. Yeah. Then we're also using MyFitnessPal, which um, yeah. is a food logging app, but they also post discussions. So I'll ask them how the first week we cut out red meat. So I asked them how they were doing. Yeah. So they posted online what they were feeling, anything like that, because mm -hmm. it really is hard going yeah. vegetarian. Interesting enough, if you, uh, any of you are familiar with the Daniel plan, they call the group, you know, they meet in group meetings uh, once a week, they mm -hmm. call that the secret sauce. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. That's kind of, yeah. they yeah, like it that. Is. Yeah. Yeah. It is, and so yeah. having that support, you know, we talk yeah. about this in class all the time, that if it's different from what you grew up with or your family yeah. structure, you really are learning a whole new way to eat. Mm -hmm. And right. so that was an important step. The cooking class, I think, is the second most important yeah. step because it teaches you to substitute or to look at different foods differently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so instead of, ooh, I've never had that, yeah. wow, I can eat Italian and I can eat healthy Italian. Not and you really have to look at the food. You really do. Yes. Be mindful. Mm -hmm. yeah. it is. What, what is that right I there? I think that goes with the whole mind-body connection yeah. is, yeah. you know, yeah. mind over matter and how do we change yeah. it yeah. so it is healthier. Yeah. So it's a matter of eating different food, isn't it? Really, it is. to take yeah. the vitamins, the minerals, the phytochemicals in plants mm -hmm. that make the whole thing work. The symphony, the rainbow, the interaction mm -hmm. that, that uh, lead to, to a good health, which is well described in Forks Over Knives. It is. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, which Esseltine from Cleveland Clinic uh, wrote the original papers on that, and as well as Bernard and McDougall, uh, uh, and, and really teaches. What was number three? The third is, again, the tracking that kind of creates an awareness okay. of mm -hmm. where we are. And I'm actually in the control group, and for me, it, again, just re reinforced, wow, I do have, you know, more in the sweets category that I <laughs> want. <laughs> yeah. 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 It did, it kind of yeah. served as a, yeah. uh, oh, wow, yeah. at yeah. the end of the day, I yeah. was able to mm -hmm. put those in and I need to have more fruits yeah. and vegetables mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I've really enjoyed it. And again, I, I learn as a teacher, but as a student too, yeah. from our students. So it's, yeah. it's been a great experience. Well, I have to really uh, congratulate you and Sue for really promoting this uh, among the students and so when they graduate, uh, I mean, they'll have more knowledge than, you know, 90% of the people. Well, uh, I, you know, I yeah. just believe in applying what you learn. Yeah. 
because yeah. if you learn it, take the test. We were talking about this on the ride up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> is that, you know, you want that knowledge to have meaning, and the yeah. only way to transfer that is through application. And so these capstone projects really do allow the students to see it through beyond yeah. just the idea, to put it yeah. into practice. And so we really value that in our program. Yeah, I've heard only one third of the people, I've, I've read this, only one third of the people know how to cook, and half of those are not quite the <laughs> proof. <laughs> 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 I must say, I, I, I'm slowly learning, I'm attending these lectures. And, and I hear the Harvard School uh, online has a very good system of teaching cooking, is that correct? We I learned that from John, yeah. our yeah. chef, mm -hmm. the, the gentleman who yeah. is doing the cooking demonstrations, who mm -hmm. is yeah. also, I think, pretty fabulous. He, he's <laughs> yeah, very, yeah. but Absolutely. yes, he said that Harvard uh, does have online courses that talk about cooking and mm -hmm. food and why you put certain foods together from a chemical perspective. And it's called yeah. it's called. Um, I attached it actually oh, for the did? experimental yeah. email yeah. that I sent. Tell us out. the website. Tell us. Um, well, I'm not sure if it's actual website. There might be. I know they have it all on YouTube, and it's all free, oh, okay. which is really nice. Mm -hmm. okay. well, that's um, but it's the yeah. Harvard Cooking and Science Lectures. Okay. So, like Susan said, it's basically bringing science together with every all the chemicals and nutrients in the foods and how to cook them to the best of the ability to be healthier that's and everything like so that. So it's all on YouTube. We it's can all, all get it programs. free. Mm -hmm. yep. And mm -hmm. say the name again. The Harvard, Harvard Cooking King. and Science Lectures. Mm -hmm. Write it down. That's a real <laughs> piece of yes. information. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Allison, tell us uh, about, we have two Allisons here. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, uh, tell us about uh, your projects. Okay, yeah, so um, I have right now, I've kind of two projects that I've been working on. I have my honors project and then um, my capstone project. So my honors project was all about uh, neurasthenia and the rest cure. And I actually took a literature perspective, so I took um, Nurse Denny of the Rest Cure. I related the history to literature, and then I mm -hmm. also put an exercise component to that as well. Yeah, tell us what neurasthenia, which to most of us would be a strange term. I just mm -hmm. took a little interest in it by total coincidence. I mean, what are the yeah. odds of finding a student who knows something about neurasthenia? <laughs> I, I told him it's one in 30,000. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Are you, I don't think you find a student that knew it, and here mm -hmm. we all know it. Yeah. And, and I even brought this book I had at home to prove the point that I knew something about it. Neurasthenia, <laughs> I mean, to me, just to kind of get you thinking in some direction, it's sort of the fibromyalgia of today, mm -hmm. uh, the chronic anxiety of today. Uh, and, and she's speaking about 1800s, 1850s to Correct. 1920, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they decorated it a little differently, but a lot of that took place here in Kalamazoo and in, in the area. So yeah. uh, mm -hmm. start your story, let's hear about sure, it. Sure, yeah, so um, Dr. George Miller Beard, he was the kind of founder of this disease and he didn't quite understand it at first. He thought it was kind of these like nervous energy orbs that were kind of bumping together and um, what we could relate to it today is the anxiety, the depression, the chronic fatigue, even um, all fibromyalgia, like you said. That's kind of what it is today. Um, then mm -hmm. it wasn't as understand, understood as well. So he came up with this diagnosis, this neurasthenia. And um, so then doctors were like, okay, let's find a cure to this. Um, it was mainly in women. It was in men too, but mainly in women and uh, mainly in more wealthy um, areas. So they found the rest cure. And what they did with the rest cure, um, it was Dr. I think it's M Silas Mitchell Weir, I believe. He came up with the res rest cure and he said, um, women, um, as opposed to men, women should remain more domestic. So they should um, be diagnosed or they should have this rest cure, quote unquote where they stayed as, as domestic as possible. They would be in a room by themselves. Um, they weren't allowed to think, and that was huge. They weren't allowed to read. They weren't allowed to have conversations. So it was a very intense um, situation that they were put in, and it, a lot of women actually went kind of crazy. This made it worse. They institutionalized them, really, didn't they? They did, mm -hmm. uh -huh. they, 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 There was one, I think, over here in uh, Kalamazoo, Kalamazoo. Actually, one of the original people Correct to uh, work, to uh, put one together, his name was Kellogg. Mm. It, very same Kellogg, yeah, yeah. you know, where the mm -hmm. cereal foods uh, came mm -hmm. from. Yeah. The, this institute was over here in, in uh, uh, right over here, in uh, cl very close to us. Yeah. It's uh, kind of instinct. And it was interesting too that women were thought to be more stressful, uh, just like today. Mm -hmm. They consider, uh, 
and I, I believe it. I mean, you get three or four kids, and the big kid comes home, and, uh, and they have very little control of their lives. They don't control the budget, and, and they have the more stressful diseases, in my experience. But the, even back then, I think yeah. they thought then, too, it was changed with society, the industrialization of society. But in this great book here by David Schuster, this is a book hard to find. Of all things, this was written in Fort Wayne, Indiana, mm -hmm. uh, at I.E. Purdue. This David G. Schuster, I met him four or five years ago, wrote this excellent, excellent book uh, and, uh, and describes this. But he also mentions even back in the 1700s, way before that, there was a form of that, it, it, the industrialization like in London. Mm -hmm. these, these, they just put a different name on it. Uh, and and uh, they put people in institutions a lot. They called them asylums. Mm -hmm. They were put in asylums. Totally locked in. Tough to get out. Yes, very it is, uh, <laughs> tough. So uh, uh, continue with the yeah. story. So um, and today we can kind of relate that to solitary confinement that we see in prisons, um, yeah. which, yeah. I mean, that's a punishment. That's a really nasty punishment in prisons. And we were doing this to our women who were sick. So um, we can yeah. kind of look at that today and think, what were we thinking? Um, but that's kind of how we are, you know, with medicine. We're always learning. We're always improving on what we're doing. I mean, it's a science just like everything else. Mm -hmm. And um, so what I find interesting is the differences between how they treated men and how they treated women. Mm -hmm. um, that while they said women, yes, remained as, as, as domestic as possible, they told men to basically um, go out and be as active as possible. They said men should be men. They should um, go out and chop wood and, you know, run around and do, real, <laughs> do really active things. And and things. Yeah, a lot yeah. of them <laughs> got better pretty quickly um, because, I mean, we can look at that today and, you know, doing an exercise prescription makes a lot of sense um, for that type of disorder. And um, what they, their thought process with this was that it's going to initially, having them rest is going to lower the blood pressure. You know, it's going to calm them down. And at first, that did a lot of good because it did. It, you know, it relaxed. I mean, if we're thinking anxiety, depression, um, they had that lower blood pressure. It cleared their mind. They were able to think better. And um, that did work at first. But then when they had weeks and weeks of this solitary confinement, this rest cure, um, that's when we saw the mental deterioration. And that's actually when I took um, the comparison with literature. So if we look back, um, Charlotte Perkins Gilman, she wrote a, a story, The Yellow Wallpaper, and it was how she described her personal experience. And it was basically this women, woman, um, over time, she was great. You know, she was writing the story first, first person, and you know, she started out really sharp. She was on top of things. You know, she was a very intelligent woman. And after she had this rescue for a while, she um, she really just deteriorated, deteriorated mentally and physically to the point where she was seeing people in the wallpaper. You know, she was really skeptical of her husband. She didn't know where what she kind of was going on in her mind, and um, she started tearing down the wallpaper and trying to liberate herself almost because she saw herself in the wallpaper. She saw herself as being trapped, which is um, how she was in her mind. She was she was trapped, and. Um, it, it's a really kind of intense story, and actually Charlotte Perkins Gilman had some negative feedback. People were like, you know, why would you write this? This isn't, you know, this is intense, especially for the time period. And, um, but she's like, I I'm telling the truth. I'm getting my story out there. This is what happened to me, and she didn't want it to happen again. Mm -hmm. So that's why. It was a bestseller book, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. it did yeah. very, very well, and even to this day. And I, again, I think the interesting part is what we've learned from history and writing like that mm -hmm. to today, that how important healthy living is. So when we connect students or, again, adults, your mood can be connected to the food that you eat. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. certain foods can induce different mm -hmm. mood settings. And so we know mm -hmm. with, again, refined um, carbohydrates, things that are going to hit us quick, mm -hmm. it might be a quick burst of energy followed by yeah. a crash. And so a lot of times just connecting students to the type of food you eat will impact your mood. And so, again, having that mind-body discussion mm -hmm. is something they never have really come across to that point. Yeah. So that's why we really, you know, we were interested in Allison's work and seeing that historical pers perspective was really interesting. Yeah. I think if we look at literature in general, um, especially history, um, we can see 
kind of where we went wrong and where where the thought processes were, especially for mental disorders. Because, mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's no way, we can look at things physically, but I mean, if we're looking at literature and books and different things that were written, we can see that, how they felt mentally and how things were helping or not helping. I think sometimes we overlook um, the importance of literature and different components and history in general, so we don't make the same mistakes again, obviously. Yeah, and that seemed to be the popular uh, diagnosis, especially where Mitchell really was the one who carried this uh, forward. He did, yeah. Uh, and he lived around 1910 or so, I think, and, uh, and, and that was the most unusual individual. Uh, he got a lot of the veterans who had uh, legs removed from injuries and, mm -hmm. and, and his work on the exposed nerves, the amount of pain that these people had. Causalgia was named uh, after him. He became Surgeon General of the United States. Uh, he is uh, in many commissions and taught uh, uh, college level and, and, and writing all the time. And he was the most unusual individual. And, uh, and, uh, and I even told my wife, I, I said, now think of me, a busy I am, always thinking, always writing. Multiply me by five or ten times and you probably <laughs> met <laughs> Will Mitchell yeah. and maybe more uh, than that. Uh, this is a wonderful uh, uh, book uh, uh, to read and I recommend to everybody. But sort of in 1920 or so, uh, they got away from that diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Although when I think of my 44 years as a neurologist and neurosurgeon, uh, I looked at a lot of those patients. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they came decorated differently. They came uh, decorated with a lot of symptoms and because of uh, today's CTs, MRIs and different diagnostic uh, studies uh, that we, uh, frankly, I think, I'm making names for them, what I call mind-body illnesses, yes. fibromyalgia, mm -hmm. uh, uh, tension headaches, uh, irritable bowel, atypical chest pain, a lot of skin rashes are caused. Uh, Candace Pert wrote a book, 1972, Molecules of Emotion. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've not read that, a really a good book to read uh, because, you know, science also advanced. Right. And she showed how neuropeptides, hormones, neurotransmitters, which are produced by the brain based on your thought process, mm -hmm. affect your body. And then you add the autonomic nervous system, which we discovered in 1910. Then you, uh, then you add the sympathetic, uh, the, sympathetic the, 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 the stressor, and the parasympathetic the, the relaxer. And now they've shown nerves going even to your immune system, leading right to the spleen. Uh, nerves running right to some of the lymphatic system and the fat in your belly. How the, how the body, is, it's, it's mind, body, and then they found out that white cells, Kenneth per, uh, proved, um, also make neurotransmitters uh, and speak back to our brain. So it's mind, body, mind, brain. This is, in medicine, it's still ignored. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's still ignored. I wrote a book called Welcome to Your Mind, Body. It's on Amazon, but do, do I see patients being interpreted uh, with some of these illnesses that come in with a headache or neck pain or shoulder pain or back pain. And, but what we need to do is find out the history of the patient. Mm -hmm. We need to speak to the patient. Mm -hmm. What's happening a lot today, you know, the doctors get 10 minutes, you know, it's, it's the prescription to the ill instead of a, a hug and a conversation. Mm -hmm. What's really going on in your life? Well, you know, my... Uh, husband uh, left me uh, three months ago and lost my job a week ago. And the patient doesn't say that. They came in, they didn't say, I got a neck pain, I have yeah. low back pain. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of that. I even uh, wrote a book called, uh, you've heard of placebo, you know, mm -hmm. we all know placebo effect mm -hmm. uh, can be, uh, as long as you believe, it works. It could be mm -hmm. me, it could, could be something we do to you and you believe it. But nocebo, that's the opposite, negative speak. I, I, speak to very few providers, ever heard of the word. Actually, I talked to a radiologist today, I went over to look at an x-ray for a friend to see if he had a kidney stone. And I, I just to see, you know, I'm kind of inquisitive, I asked him if he knew what the word nocebo meant, he did not. But when you think about it, what's he doing all day? Reading x-rays, five sp uh, thing reports, uh, doesn't know the history of the patient, and hands that six page report to, to the doctor or the patient, and, 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 it doesn't, and, and the patient interprets this, oh my God, I'm dying. When in reality, maybe the x-rays get very little to do with the problem. So we are noceboing a mm -hmm. lot of people, including ourselves. Mm -hmm. you know, our yeah. beliefs, 
uh, about what's going on in our life. So it's a very, the mind-body connection is not only applies to food, but to the rest of the mind-body illnesses, mm -hmm. which can be from skin rashes to chest pain to irritable bile to, mm -hmm. to a zillion other things. It's a very interesting thing. Mm -hmm. So, but so much, it, it, what they thought so in the 1890s and around so is that that people because of this anxiety and stress and uh, is that uh, they were losing the energy in their body so mm -hmm. they, there were a lot of uh, instrumentation things even you see in the cover of this book you see you see this man uh, with an electric belt on they yeah. were selling that as res to restore <laughs> your to energy, energy back. even in this oh, yeah. book there is a, a a, a human being with every organ and everything, and every organ has in it a machine. <laughs> they thought it was all electrically mm -hmm. interrelated. Well, in a way, in a way, it's an interesting concept. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the like Kenneth Pert said that your neuropeptides, neurotransmitters, and hormones affect the rest of your body through what hormones and things. But they didn't know about them then, so they they called it, you know, electrical energy. A lot of those, yeah, they call them even TENS units. And they were sold, and, and we still use TENS yes. units mm -hmm. occasionally yeah. now. They're still mm -hmm. used a lot. Yeah. Yeah. We Quite still, you know, yeah. use them. And it's like um, acupuncture, uh, which, I mean, definitely there's good results, some good results from it. But the question is, uh, no one's ever demonstrated uh, the energy that's doing it. Uh, is it a belief? Is it a placebo effect? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, who, who cares? It's not a narcotic. We didn't operate on you, right. so as long as you know it. Uh, and so, uh, these mind-body illnesses, what I call them, uh, mm -hmm. which uh, have made it into the modern era. But, but I think compared to neurasthenia 1890s, we don't pay as much attention to them now. Mm -hmm. We're doing big stuff to these people. Mm -hmm. We're doing big spine surgeries. Out comes the gallbladder. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you name an organ. You know what I mean? And, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I heard the other day, someone told me, I wouldn't believe it, but it's true, but maybe there's a need for it, that they're going to open up a, in town here a reflux institute. <laughs> oh. Okay? Oh. Well, a lot of people have reflux. <laughs> Probably, oh, yeah. Yeah. No <laughs> doubt about it, but uh, to me, the first treatment might be uh, uh, nutrition. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. Because it's, it's due to uh, mm -hmm. having a big belly most of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and uh, but so we uh, new technol technologies get it invented for you know what what uh, uh, everything. I mean, it's very uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, subject. So my interest in nutrition and and I like uh, your uh, input into it uh, as a neurologist, neurosurgeon. Uh, I've seen a lot of people in my practice come to me with back pain, but. But they had significant health problems in terms of diabetes, heart disease, strokes, hypertension, and most of them uh, had type 2 diabetes. So that's been my major focus now. This is what I'm focusing on because, after all, what I say, I'm a wellness doctor trying to get people well. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and really the secret to type 2, to type two diabetes, uh, uh, frankly, uh, is nutrition. Mm -hmm. as nutrition mm -hmm. yeah, and, and I think there's probably lack of knowledge out there mm -hmm. and there's some ethnic racial groups who uh, come with a genetic structure that's not compatible with the food that we're eating what what uh, I found of interest is there is genetic information in the food that we're eating and especially with when we're talking about nutrient-dense foods, mm -hmm. the beans, uh, uh, the broccoli, uh, the, the, the healthy foods because of the phytochemicals. Uh, this is what we, in ancient times, is what uh, people ate. But we're eating so much genetically modified, hybridized food, it's not compatible with our genetic structure. Mm -hmm. What I find interesting, there's a subject now called epigenetics. I mean, I'll admit, I didn't know a lot about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all thought <laughs> that we were born uh, with uh, uh, a gene structure, a chromosome structure, and we're stuck with that. That's really not true. 90% mm -hmm. mm -hmm. of our ge genetic structure through the telomeres and the chromosomes, the extension of our chromosomes, are modifiable by lifestyle, yeah. environment, and nutrition. Mm -hmm. Nutrition being the biggest thing 
Yeah, uh, people don't realize that. So, and that goes back even two or three generations. So, what you are, even just when you when you are uh, when you are born when you are born, uh, is is what uh, mother and father ate before conception. Mm -hmm. But also their parents and, and grandparents mm -hmm. affects the genetic structure of the uh, of the mm -hmm. sperm and the egg, and then. Uh, whether they're smoking, or whether they're exercising, mm -hmm. uh, what they're eating, what's in the environment, and then in the placenta, and the child is born, and what you feed the child, all affects their genetic structure. So uh, it changes their, gene their st genetic structure itself, and it's related to biomathematics. This, this I find fascinating, biomathematics, and that uh, is that there is symmetry in nature. Look, look. Look at the flowers. I mean, you, you'll see, uh, for example, you'll see three leaves, okay? You see three leaves. What's the next one? Four leaves? No, it's five leaves. That, that's based on Fibonacci numbers. Yeah, this is in nature, actual mathematics in nature. What's the next? You take the last two numbers, add them up, and go on in nature. And, it's, and there's symmetry in it. So uh, I've had pictures of three people on, on my uh, cashmanhealth.com on my PowerPoint on diabetes, you see pictures of three people that lost 100, 150 pounds, and you see before and after, the three look like movie stars. What happened? Nature rearranged their body. It's not just the weight loss. It's not just the weight loss. There's symmetry in nature. Look, look at the flowers, look at the plants. See the tremendous symmetry? So when you eat them, isn't that great news? <laughs> mm -hmm. You get that symmetry. Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't know that. And, uh, so uh, reading about epigenetics, uh, I mean, to me, it's uh, Deep Nutrition by Shanahan. Deep Nutrition by Shanahan is a great book to read. And it has pictures of it and some plastic surgeon get involved and use it to, to uh, make women more beautiful. <laughs> and it works. He has pictures in <laughs> yeah. there and we have these, you know, demonstrations. So it's really, uh, uh, nu nutrition is a, uh, a fascinating field. I'm going to take a minute and, 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 and this I don't know if you'll enjoy this or not, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, to make it something that, that especially with type 2 diabetes, remember what I, what I said about it? Uh, a lot of times uh, it's not diagnosed on, on time. Uh, there's five stages of type 2 diabetes. One is where you get insulin resistance. That's where you're a bit overweight, uh, but you're still feeling good. You're, you're looking good, uh, but your blood work isn't good, okay? And many times we don't diagnose people. Uh, uh, early enough. Stage two is where your insulin level is up. We're still t checking your blood sugar, your HbA1c, it's normal. But your serum insulin is up, you get insulin resistance. Stage three, the, the blood sugar oscillates up and down, uh, just like a roller coaster, up and down to stage three. We still haven't diagnosed you type 2 diabetes. Then stage four, we're diagnosing you now because your HbA1c, we take the sugar and protein that, that, that's three months out, you get the test. Uh, and now we said, well, you're pre-diabetic or diabetic. That's stage four diabetes. We're di but in the meanwhile, your whole body's been inflamed uh, through the sugars, that, too much sugar you've been eating, or the omega-6 fats, the bad uh, fats. We're, we're diagnosing you at stage four. You know what stage five is? Blindness, amputations, joint involvement, heart attacks, strokes, uh, and uh, so, I, I'm trying to promote early testing, early testing through glucose tolerance tests, CRP, uh, to, to diagnose you very early. Then if we start eating like the forks over knives, and not a diet, you're not recommending a diet. It's a lifestyle change. A lifestyle change, mm -hmm. a lifestyle change. And this is what forks over knives really is, is all about. Dr. Esseltine, what Dr. Esseltine from the Cleveland Clinic did, and he's still alive, I've met him, I've met him. What he really did is took 25 of the most sick cardiac patients at the Cleveland Clinic, the ones that cardiologists wanted nothing to do with anymore. There's nothing we can do. With great reluctance, they gave them to him and his wife. His wife is involved in this too. Uh, they taught them to eat a, a vegetarian-type mm -hmm. diet. And, uh, and versus, say, Dr. Furman, Eat to Live, a very famous book too, my friend, he, you know, he say 20% uh, meat type products, okay, as long as they're organic uh, meats. But Dr. Esseltine, it's, it's no meat at all. But you know those 25 people, I think uh, that was 30 years ago, only one died. <laughs> they all alive. Wow. And uh, yeah, wow. and he muscled it in there and it's a wonderful 
description and 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 uh, uh, Dr. Uh, McDougall, Dr. Barnett, all these all people are teaching really the same thing. Maybe not quite quite uh, uh, as uh, strict. Uh, so to summarize the uh, diabetic thing, though a little bit, I, I uh, did something uh, uh, called speaking word, speaking word. This is not a rap song, but it's a poetry. <laughs> so forgive me a little bit. But, uh, but it summarizes it really over a six minute period here. And, and what I'm saying is type two diabetes is 90% of the time is preventable, stoppable, and reversible. Franklin House wrote a book called The 30 Day Miracle. He proved it. Uh, Dr. Esseltine's work here, Bernard's work, uh, uh, Richard Johnson's work, uh, Lustig, Robert Lustig, you can get them on YouTube. They all feel the same way. We're all in agreement. So uh, what am I saying? Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Start spreading the news. I'm sick and tired of it. Diabetes is diabolical, crippling, and deadly. I'm walking through the heart of it. I'll show you how. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. My BMI is sky high. I might die. Wheat belly, beer belly, stress belly, pear shape, apple shape. We all hate. It's the cause of it. This is a judgment free zone. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Rudy's good news. That's Rudy from Notre Dame, but my name's Rudy too. <laughs> <laughs> it can be prevented. Stopped and reversed. Eradicate. Don't just medicate. The time is now. Prevention. Proven. Powerful. Possible. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Heart disease and strokes are no joke. Memory loss, dementia, Alzheimer's, a new breeze. They're related to type 2 diabetes. Yes. Dialysis, paralysis are no fun. Amputation, dislocation, and you're done. 180,000 people a year are amputated. Generally, the, most of them die within two years. Get rid of it, get rid of it, get rid of it. Atherosclerosis, arteriosclerosis, 300,000 miles of capillaries in the body, circulating the blood, feeding the brain, pump the blood, Feed the brain, avoid the pain. Happiness and health will be the new wealth. Avoid information, avoid information, avoid information. Our bodies are on fire. Most don't know it. It's destroying our health. 100 million people are pre-diabetic in this nation, majority are undiagnosed. They're thinking in 2025, there'll be 300 million people. Would you believe it? And if we can prevent it, good gosh. Most undiagnosed, we don't see it. We worry about Ebola. This is the real problem. We have an inflammatory nation. Sugar's a bugger. Sugar is a lipinator. It makes us fat. Sugar is what makes us fat because it, the fructose and sugar goes to the liver and causes fatty liver. That's really the problem. Don't eat it, don't eat it, don't eat it. White, sweet, addictive, and deadly. That's sugar. Second disease to please. Judkin and Cleave, 1970s, wrote books, said it was deadly. The fat theory of disease won out. These guys were buried. They didn't accept the information. The government, this is true, the government, the CDC, NIH, American Heart Association, Ansel Keys, promoted the fat theory of disease. They said you had a low-fat diet. They were wrong. And they encouraged you to eat sugar. They knew better, too. I reviewed the literature on that. They knew better. They were getting, Procter & Gamble paid them a lot of money. All dead wrong. It killed a lot of people and still is today. They, they should stand now at a mountaintop and announce we were wrong and change. They're not. Sugar, fructose, and omega-6 fats are deadly. Deadly, deadly, deadly. Fructose corn syrup, you've heard of that? Franken syrup. We are fruct and cooked. <laughs> Not fit to eat, Dr. Lustig said. <laughs> fructose, the evil twin. 
the sad diet. See, fructose and glucose, which makes up sucrose, has the same chemical formula. The body is recognizes it differently. Uh, and uh, the fructose is what causes fat, uh, fatty liver and inflames our whole body. Fat, salt, and sugar, sugary drinks, liquid white gold. Stop it, stop it. Sugary drinks cause 50% of being overweight. Sugar addiction habituation, we're addicted to it. That's the Lex Luthor, remember him? <laughs> <laughs> the quick fix, the sugar fix. This one you won't believe, one molecule difference between cocaine and sugar. That's your pain. Mm -hmm. The government supports the price. That's not nice. They pay these millionaires, these sugar farms, uh, mi millions of dollars because they give the money to the congressman. That's why they vote that way. Avoid it, avoid it, avoid it. Sugars are the hooker. <laughs> Fructose is <laughs> evil twin. Avoid it to be thin. Knowledge is everything. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Nutrient dense, nutrient dense. Foods of color, not hard to swallow. Vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals. No diet, eat right, and you'll be tight. The mosaic, the rainbow, the music, the symphony of interaction will get you well. Green smoothie a day will keep the doctor away. <laughs> Eat it, eat it, eat it. <laughs> Fat is not all bad, so sad. Sugar's the enemy at the gate. That's what we hate. Omega-3 is the good fat. That's what we need. Eat it, eat it, uh, eat it. Salads, complex carbs, lean meat. Right here, right here. Rudy's plate, no diet. Pick up the beet, take the heat. Eat it, eat it, eat it. Eat nutrient dense without suspense. Watch the fingers, the forks in your feet. Foods of color are your mother. Lose 10% of your bl blubber and you'll be well. Do it, do it, do it. Give me a break. Delusion, denial, it's not for me. Live to be 100. 25 BMI is the number. Less pills to the ill. Do it, do it, do it. It's a golden opportunity. Kill prediabetes and diabetes. Remember, 90% can be prevented, stopped, and reversed. Proper testing, yearly screening. Fasting blood sugar, two hours glucose tolerance test, CRP, lipid profile, blood pressure, BMI, and a gluten test. We don't run enough gluten tests. A lot of diabetes due to gluten sensitivities. Do it, do it, do it. Testing is critical, critical. Nuts and beans will slim your genes. <laughs> Fiber is your friend in the end. <laughs> G-bombs, beans, mushrooms, salad, onions, and nuts are the way. Eat it, eat it, eat it. Eat an ounce of nuts a day, Dr. Fremlin would say. Five steps to hell. Five to 10 years we have prediabetes, we're undiagnosed, our body's inflamed. Insulin resistance, step one. It's the beginning of the path to hell. Elevated serum insulin level is step two. Still, you're not diagnosed. You're starting to jog to chronic disease of heart attacks, strokes, uh, dementia. Increased rates of cancer are due to obesity. 75% of uterine cancer is due to being overweight. Most people don't know that. Now we are st step four. The insulin resistance, elevated uh, insulin, your HbA1c is elevated, you're on the roller coaster ride of sugars up and down, and you're approaching the fire, and now you're diagnosed. But you've been inflamed probably for five to ten years. Your vasculature uh, is chronically inflamed. Before you hit step four, significant number of people don't develop angina. They have a heart attack and die without warning. It happens. It's well known. Step five, blindness, amputations, heart attacks, strokes, dementia, cancer, death is not far away. 90% of that can be avoided. Opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. Avoid sitting disease. Yes, you sit three and a half hours a day as I smoke in a pack and a half of cigarettes. That's the latest finding. Music and dancing are enhancing. 
Walk 30 minutes a day. Keep the doctor away. Walk a mile with a smile. <laughs> Yoga and Tai Chi are for thee. <laughs> and uh, pick an exercise you enjoy, you're more likely to do it. Walk, lift your feet, sing a song. Baby, it's cold outside. <laughs> I bet you, I bet you. You can if you think you can. And where we spoke, of groups and friends are the secret sauce. Love is the answer. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry for putting that together, but first time in public performance. But Very uh, good. Excellent. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. Does it tell you the story? Yes, it does. Does it tell you the story? I like yeah. the hand signal. And, uh, okay. Yeah, I have to, and you know, one of my students last semester talked about the statistic, the, the prognosis or the prediction is that by 2025, 90% of the American public is going to be overweight to obese, 90%. Isn't that a national, that, it's a national that's, emergency. Uh, that's you know, we, like we have a czar, we have a czar for Ebola, maybe what, yes. two or three deaths. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and we don't have a czar for this. Matter of fact, I'll tell you what I did, and there's maybe a bit, but a governor was here recently presenting his new program, the HEP2 program, which he did a very nice job. Mm -hmm. I was there in the auditorium at Lutheran's where I gave my diabetic lecture days before. But I had just as many people as he did, incidentally. And, and, I, and he mentioned to us, uh, something very scary, and that's really worth discussing here and ask your opinion what to do about it. Uh, we, the United States is uh, 45th in the world in terms of uh, health care. Yeah. Wow. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. World okay. Health Organization. The best health care okay? is not in the okay. United States, mm -hmm. yes, sadly. That is true. Sadly. Indiana is 41st in the nation. Wow, we're down yeah. there. When you see these modern hospitals here, what's mm -hmm. going on? Yeah. I work there. These guys are good. <laughs> but I think, do they teach wellness? That's another thing, mm -hmm. okay? But at least uh, we're trying. Then I found out yesterday that we're 40, 45th in the nation uh, in, in terms of, of um, newborns, in terms of complications and morbidity oh. of newborns. 45th. Mm -hmm. in, 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 uh, yeah. And I spoke to one of the... And some of that is it determined uh, social systems, ethnicity, and different things. And uh, but you know, it's 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 it, it's it needs to be studied, and we need to you know mm -hmm. to address it. Any, this is what I did. This is what I did uh, because you know I'm into this. Written 17 books on wellness, and it's, it's <laughs> my passion. <laughs> Say the list. I wrote a letter to the governor to see if you consider appointing a health czar to go around the state to talk to every school, to, uh, to every uh, government, and talk to all the newspapers to, uh, because uh, I think eventually an employer, say I'm an employer from Germany and I want to bring a factory to the United States. Mm -hmm. would, would I take people to Indiana with health statistics like that? I think twice about it. That's a lot of health care cost. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's going to happen. And maybe this would motivate him. But anyway, I applied for the job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, yeah, and, 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 you know, maybe that's a bit uh, whatever. Whatever you mm -hmm. want to call it. But nothing going to happen unless you try it. You know what I mean? <laughs> because it, this is a huge thing. Yeah. It, 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 these are good people that live in this state. Mm -hmm. They respond. I yeah. think what we do, you know, just like, you know, I do talk in the Daniel plan, a way of teaching uh, wellness through religion. We a very good way uh, to do it. And, and one of the quotes out of, uh, out of Hosea 6, 4 is, we lack information. Mm -hmm. That's right in the Bible, actually. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and I think most people are sincere, like to do something, but I think they lack uh, uh, information. And then I think the government uh, and the food industry has, has you know, been very helpful. But again, I, I like to remind everyone, though, though, that if we went to a fast food restaurant and we demanded uh, to eat healthy food, you know what they have left a while, Allison? Healthy food. Yeah. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they want to sell things. Yeah. So yeah. we yeah. can't blame mm -hmm. everything on them. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. The one I blame the most, really, is the government is cahoots with these people. They're out there to make a living, out to make money. I can almost understand it. Uh, but the, that's the government's job and our job to expose it and to change it. Mm -hmm. They're paying a lot of money as lobbyists to the people. The sugar industry is shameful. Can you imagine the government supports the price of sugar when that's what's causing type 2 diabetes and killing us? It's, it's, it's not believable. 
and mm -hmm. it's our congressmen that need to need to to uh, you know uh, uh, change change that. Tell me what else uh, you're teaching uh, in your uh, classes. There, exercise science is, is exercise is, science, mm -hmm. and uh, we teach um, you know the basics of exercise, how the body works and how it functions mm -hmm. and how it works together. Uh, but we do also teach nutrition and health nutrition mm -hmm. and, you know, the importance of food and the difference it can make. Uh, we do pre-physical therapy for people who will be coming along uh, for the future. Mm -hmm. Say. We talk about health problems, so everything health that you problems, mentioned yes. is mm -hmm. the chronic health I conditions, yeah. and <laughs> most of them have within the solution diet and exercise. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, so, was, yep. Go ahead. I just thought it was interesting that you brought up the epigenetics, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Only because that's kind of what I want to show with the study is that even if you're born this way or have those yeah. genetics, yeah. or even like me, if I've been eating yeah. this way for 21 years, I'm 22 yeah. now that it can change, like you said, yeah. if you've been living this way or even when you were born with those genetics and everything, that it actually can change mm -hmm. and that you You know, epigenetics is a, is a very hopeful message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, I did not always know about it. I started mm -hmm. reading about it and I got about six books on it now, now. Mm -hmm. I, I hardly speak to a provider knows anything about it. Yeah. I find it just a little exciting, mm -hmm. especially it can rearrange the way we look, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Exactly. And, uh, and I personally believe a uh, person can live to be 100 or 110 uh, unless they get hit by a Mack truck <laughs> uh, <laughs> by, by uh, eating this mm -hmm. way. And it's not a diet. Uh, incidentally, the nutrients in this food, the nutrients in this food will turn people's appetite off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you'll not be hungry because you're eating this way. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you, you just, you know, 80% this way, not necessarily have to be 100% uh, and find out what good and bad fats are. A lot of people don't know what mm -hmm. good and bad fats are. You see, we need are some essential fats to make our body work. Mm -hmm. This is an interesting story. Uh, before uh, living things had a heart mm -hmm. uh, and lungs and a blood system, you know how they uh, communicated? Through so essential fatty acids, omega-3s, omega-6s. Every, uh, incidentally, every one of our cells in our body, okay, has some fat in it, has some, uh, Lelonic, uh, alpha lelonic acid in it. And that's how the chlorophyll, and there's chlorophyll that picks up the energy from the sun. Uh, and uh, uh, it's taken up by the fats, uh, the, uh, the alpha lelonic acid, that's the omega-3s, the good fats. So we need mm -hmm. some good fats. So those are anti-inflammatory, okay? And our 70 trillion cells, because they had no blood system, no nervous system, communicated with each other, these cells, say one cell, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and they have receptors on them, these things sticking up. They communicate to each other uh, by these essential fatty acids from jumping from cell to cell. Oh, wow. That was their communicating system. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and we still have it today. Mm -hmm. So we use, uh, Americans are eating 20 to one omega-6 mm -hmm. versus omega-3. Mm -hmm. We need to be two to one, one to one. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, the, it, so there are bad fats. It's not just sugar. I mean, like I said, you know, sugar's the hooker or the booger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but there are, um, uh, there are bad fats, you know what I mean? So you need to know where is it, if I'm going to eat some meat, where did it come from? Did it come from a fish pond where they're feeding the uh, omega-6s, inflammatory foods, uh, soybeans, and genetically modified corn to that fish out of a pond you're eating? I would ask, ask the waiter, uh, uh, I always ask the uh, waiter, uh, where's the fish from? You know, is mm -hmm. the fish from a pond or from the ocean? We were and that can yeah. be embarrassing. Yeah. You can find the some of the restaurants in town with the fanciest names and uh, mm -hmm. in a, the country club, you know, they're speaking about Scottish salmon. Well, I, I uh, pinned the waiter down and it's not from Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's from a pond. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, so it, it's important to speak to waiter with respect. They'll always be nice to you if you speak to them with respect. Mm -hmm. And no, no doubt about it, they see me coming in, they might, especially the manager of the country club, considers me, considers me probably a little pain in the gluteus, but slowly he's changing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Starting to order uh, uh, food differently. And if we don't take on uh, the sources of our foods, they're not gonna change or, or don't buy that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Start buying the uh, uh, good foods. Mm -hmm. and, and they will change, they're willing to change. So let's kind of summarize our thought process. Uh, let's all maybe take a minute a little bit 
about our message. I think I've sent out an, uh, enough a message here, Amazon. <laughs> so summarize your message a little bit for us. Um, well, basically, like I said, the whole capstone and research study is called the Brochek mission, and I really wanted to use the Brochek yeah. mission to um, mm -hmm. to kind of show what I'm trying to do and with the epigenetics and everything like that, that you can change no matter what, no matter if you've been overweight, 396 at one point, that I am changing, and no matter what, people can do that. You find the motivation, the support, like we talked about, and you can make it happen. So. And you're making it happen. Mm -hmm. And look yeah. how beautiful she, she is. Uh -huh. yes. and, and, really. and how I mean, healthy you are. Yeah. And, and, healthy. <laughs> and healthy. And happy, and happy yes. with a beautiful smile. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank Kathy. you. I just would like to thank you, Dr. Cashman, for having us today. Mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. again, anytime we get the opportunity to share information about lifestyle and wellness and healthy behaviors, it's a really important message. And mm -hmm. again, we um, respect the work that you do and are glad to be part of that because the point that I really take home is we all just need more information to make, to start to make changes. So this little bit of education today hopefully will help a lot of people out there start to think about maybe preventing, stopping, or reversing type two diabetes. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. And we have to thank Trine University, the Heart <laughs> Center. They, they've, they mm -hmm. I think, looked at one of my books and invited me down there, and, and uh, we've been working together for a few years now. The university embraces this. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and, and that's a wonderful thing, that a major teach, teaching institution mm -hmm. embraces mm -hmm. wellness for the students and the community, mm -hmm. for everyone. Definitely. And Allison? Yeah, I would say a lot of mental disorders are often just misunderstood. Mm -hmm. um, we don't understand always a lot about them or what's going on specifically. And I think sometimes we jump to prescriptions or other things mm -hmm. when it could be avoided in the first place using um, exercise or nutrition. And I feel like we should um, take that as more of a priority. And like you said, if we address that with like wellness teachers or um, just someone who can make people knowledgeable. I feel like people want to do what's right. They want to be healthy. Sometimes they just don't know how or how to address um, what they're going through. So if we have that and we start with that education, I think we can go pretty far with that. Those are beautiful words, Alan. They're beautiful words. I would like to see, unless you fell out of a helicopter, I'd like to see every provider start the conversation. Would you be interested in the wellness aspect of your problem. Actually, the diabetic group at Lufthansa are doing it. Yeah. Uh, Brenda, every patient she sees, first thing she brings up the wellness aspect. Uh, and uh, could you, uh, Susan, kind of <laughs> bring us up to uh, <laughs> Well, I, I, yeah, the thing I would say is I'm grateful that we have people who are willing to do this. I was around when the wellness movement started I tell them this all the time. I was living in California. I watched the start of the wellness movement and it's been a part of my life from the beginning. And you have to do difficult things sometimes. You have to ask difficult questions. You have to be willing to kind of bug the person at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. and my family yeah. gets annoyed at me sometimes because I ask those questions. <laughs> but uh, I think that that is how change is brought about. And that if people realize there are other people out here who are want to work and want to help and want to make a difference, that the world can be transformed, I hope. Yeah. Beautiful words. Uh, I have the, uh, a lot of type 2 diabetes in, uh, in, uh, in my family, and, uh, and, it's, and information is not always uh, welcomed. Mm -hmm. So you have to put that message yes, out true. there with love. <laughs> love, yes. love is the answer, yes. and a hug, and a companion, <laughs> and a group, and pick up on the secret sauce, mm -hmm. which we have here today. <laughs> Uh, providing information for you. I hope you watch our other shows. Look at cashmanhealth.com uh, and uh, we you know, recommend books there and pass out more information. Look for our next show. The next uh, show we're going to do in a little bit is going to be about health apps uh, and Kathy's <laughs> going to do it. Watch that one. That show, uh, all the good health apps that are available. Uh, we love you all. That's, I think, clearly visible here today. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, uh, namaste, namaste. Uh, and uh, send us books, we'll read them, review them with you, whatever. <laughs> Visit Shrine University. The cafeteria is really good. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, if you, and if you see Allie yeah. there, she will get you a deal. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. I'll try. Uh, this is certainly uh, 